Well, I think the thing that uh, always ends up being so surprising about plays that were written in another century uh, is how remarkably elastic they are. Um, you know, you listen to the way in which Shakespeare attacks relationships, um, the words that may sound slightly like a foreign language, um, but in actuality are so accessible to understanding motivations. Um, the storytelling is so clear. And when you put it in a modern context, and you know, not modern in the sort of, oh, we're all going to be on cell phones, silly modern, but just a modern context in that we are, we could well be in a place where someone does the things that a Qaddafi does or uh, we've seen other um, of these dictators around the world, uh, particularly uh, uh, the response to them uh, in this sort of Arab Spring has been quite remarkable as we're working on a play that we think really resonates with that kind of personality um, and how uh, manipulation um, and media and trying to get, you know, one side of the country to think this and another side of the country to think that, alliances, petty jealousies. Um, and then you add to that Richard's own particular physical um, limitations and challenges and how he looks at other people and how jealous he is and how angry he is and how determined he is um, to be uh, the kind of king that he thinks that the, the, the land uh, he is ruling over deserves, which is a king of war, not a king of peace. That's just a different, you know, different philosophy. Um, but I do find that, you know, you, you start working on the language, you start in, investing the understanding of the rhythms and the poetry and the, uh, the way in which the verse moves. Um, and it's incredible how um, amazingly accessible it is, I think, to an audience and even to an audience that doesn't know Shakespeare that well. I think it is a very unique, very special relationship because Richard um, confides in the audience. They become his co-conspirators. Um, and Shakespeare quite brilliantly allows that to happen a right almost straight through the play. There, there is a kind of distancing in the second act of that particular direct address. But even if you look at um, his direct address after he wakes up from the nightmare um, late in, um, in Act 5, um, it's quite startling how much he's willing to reveal. And whether you can look at that as, well, part of it is a private address to himself and then perhaps a need to share what he's experienced and what he's feeling because he, he experiences things out of that dream that perhaps he's never experienced and feelings that he's never admitted to himself. Uh, there, it's the first time that you get a sense that he actually might have a conscience or a sense of guilt or, or regret about what he's done. Um, and that's, that's a very remarkable thing to, uh, to explore, which is sort of where we are right now.